everyone, and welcome to a very special edition of Cabo Bayan LA. This is America's first and only daily talk show for and about the Filipinos. Kung saan wala po tayo sa ating loob ng studio ngayon, we, are, we would like to thank Morph Labs for lending their facility for us for the interview this afternoon. And this is special because I have with me one of the Pinoy prides in the whole world. He is considered the Filipino version of Bill Gates. We've met him before here on the show, Mr. Dado Banatao. Hello and welcome to Cabo Bayan LA. My pleasure. Um, Dado, I interviewed you maybe two, three years ago on, on Cabo Bayan LA, but I, I don't think I ever asked you this, so I guess the first question is, how does it make you feel when people refer to you as the Filipino version of Bill Gates? It's very humbling. Mm. I mean, the guy is an icon. And, you know, what can I do, though? If they right. say that, I can't no, I'm sure it stop them, mm. but uh, he, to be compared with Bill Gates is... I don't know. I did meet the guy twice, but clearly what he has done uh, in his career in the business side and now his philanthropy, mm -hmm. it dwarfs everything. Uh, so anyway, it's You are it's up amusing, there, though. But <laughs> you are up there. We love you and we are proud of you. And your story is so inspiring. Now, Thank tell you. me about it. When you were growing up, uh, you were the son of a farmer yes. and a housekeeper. Yes. You went to school on your bare foot. You walked on bare feet to your school. Did it ever occur to you in the span of your life that you would one day be this uh, Filipino pride reaching a lot of milestones in business and now in giving back to the community, um, owning different houses in the U.S., your own planes, all these things? No, of course. Uh, I did it you even dream? Ba no, we had no time to dream. It was just so basic. Uh, mm -hmm. For example, uh, birthdays. Mm -hmm. We don't celebrate birthdays because we had no means. Uh, so going to church is it. So there was not a lot of dreaming, frankly. Mm -hmm. All we knew were basic things. So when you were growing up in, in, in conditions like that, see a lot of people that are watching us, and we all know this, people use that as an excuse. They say, oh, kasi mahirap lang kami, kaya hindi ako nakapag-aral, or mahirap lang kami, kaya hindi ako nag, sana kung may pera kami, nagkaganito, ganito. People are watching right now, and I say this is, your story is very inspiring, because despite the odds, you made it. What do you think propelled you to that? My parents, uh, especially my father. He uh, and, and my mother, of course, they were so focused in making sure we uh, move on in education. Uh, so he left uh, the Philippines, went to Guam for seven years. In the end, he became a butcher. Did that for seven years. They saved money. And so that enabled him to buy a, uh, a bigger plot of land to farm. They really focus on making sure we have the right education. All kinds of things. I remember that because uh, I was starting my high school years. Mm -hmm. And, you know, of course, you have to pay the school. and. Right. Oh, yeah. and palaging I, kapos, palaging yeah, I have to go to the office and explain. I will pay right. some now, but later. How did that make you feel? Was it? Did, did you feel embarrassed, ashamed, uh, <clears throat> resentful maybe? Your classmates were all okay not, not having to worry about tuition fees? No, not at all. Uh, keep in mind, the, uh, I went to high school at Ateneo de Tegigero. These are the Jesuits. Mm -hmm. And they have a way of uh, working with students academically, they were tough and thorough and they make you think, but there is still that humanity side that they have. Right. So even then you were, uh, you were the son of an overseas Filipino worker. And now we all know a lot of people, a lot of yes. Filipinos work abroad. It, 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 it harms the family unit and all that. And I'm sure they, they will learn also from you. What were you thinking during those times when you couldn't be with your father? You just have to cope with it. And at that I time, guess. there was no internet. There was no. It was just all snail mail. Yeah, yeah right. right. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> mail. I don't know that I saw mail while I was growing up, really? going to the barrio. Frankly, oh. a, there was not few, even. It was just being handed down, kind of thing. Uh -huh. I, I remember I was four something years old. Uh, my grandmother was the principal of the elementary school in the in the barrio, uh -huh. and I was just there playing. And um, she called me, you come with me. So she put me in first grade, oh. barely five. Right. <laughs> and 
I said, and I just listened. And then pretty, pretty soon I, I was able to catch up. up. Right. And so you learn early on that when there are enough, there, there's not enough, uh, and I didn't even think of it that way. It's easy for me to say this now, but I, at that time I just, didn't, I just did what that was asked of me. But looking back, uh, really we were left mm-hmm. alone. My mother has a little sorry, sorry store, mm-hmm. and so she was busy with that. I think part of life, in fact, is the reality that um, left alone, you have to innovate. You have to, to make do with what you have. Mm-hmm. And you think that you, you, you believe that that helped you? groom you into the man I, that you are. I would say that uh, it became more positive than negative, to your point that a lot of people use it as an excuse. Mm-hmm. I didn't think of it as an excuse uh, at all because I just did it, what is necessary. And you did it yourself. You went to school when you were five. You were in college when you were 15. We'll talk about that, the childhood of Dado Banata when we return on Kabobayan LA. Don't go away.